Hello class, my name is Anna Krupp and I'm excited to be sharing with you all today as the Communications 520 graduate class in the series of communication um, under Dr. John Katzian. So what I'm going to be talking to you all about today is information integration theory. Before I begin, I want to explain a little bit about why this was the, um, the theory that caught my interest more than any of the others. To begin, at four years of age, I was over at a neighbor's house and um, playing with a dog, as children do. And this um, dog, of course, uh, on all the cartoons that I had ever seen, dogs are supposed to play fetch. So I remember trying to give this dog a stick, and he didn't want to take the stick. So in return, he bit my arm. Now from that point on, pretty much for my adolescence, my teen years, I was very afraid of dogs and continued to be afraid of dogs and would feel unnecessarily uncomfortable around them. So what does that have to do with information integration theory? I will tell you. Uh, but before I can really get into that, I need to explain what by definition information integration theory is. So our book by Little John and Foss, 2008, uh, Theories in Human Communication, defines information integration theory as the ways we accumulate and organize information about persons, objects, situations, and ideas to form attitudes in a positive or negative way towards that same object. And what I really want to pay attention to today is that concept of positive and negative. So as we continue, I'll explain a little bit more about what that means. My research question for this particular area of study was the old adage can you, you, people always say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, my research question is, what about humans? Can you teach a human after they have developed a thought process and a response to respond in a different way? My research questions include what methods or problems were identified and, and by scholars and how does that affect your research? What do scholars already know about this theory? And is there a scholarly consensus regarding the theory? Are there any gaps of knowledge in the theory or significant debate? So those are the questions I hope to answer in um, an effort to try to figure out if you can teach a human new tricks in the way that we think. To begin, what methods or problems were identified by scholars and how do they affect the research? Well, information integration theory is brought about by the collection of data. So some of the main issues I saw in my research is that people are concerned with too much information. Can that information, how do you gather that information through interviews, through observation, in communication with people, through studies, and is it possible that you can have too much, in, too much information because we have people that are 10, 15 years old, people that are in their 40s, 50s, and then people that are in their 60s and 70s. That's a lot of information that can be garnered in an effort to try to figure out what somebody is thinking and to understand their brain and um, whether they respond in a negative or positive way. The next concept, something that I really want to focus on, is that of balance. And our book defines balance as whether information supports or refutes a belief. So in psychology, we would call this, um, we would call it affirmation, we would call it um, that concept of reinforcing something that we already know or already believe. Now that doesn't really cause a problem per se, but it is something that researchers have to take into consideration that you're dealing with people who, in my situation, I was afraid of dogs and anytime I saw a mean dog or heard of somebody else being hurt by a dog, it reinforced that in my mind that dogs are dangerous and that we should stay away from them. And then the last thing is mutual understanding. And the research that I read, um, words like fear, words like blunt, they could mean something to you as my classmate and mean something completely different to me. If you had said to me, Anna, are you afraid of dogs as a child? Well, that depends. Am I deathly afraid? Am I huddled in a corner? Am I shaking and nervous? Or am I just, oh, I would rather not be around that dog. Thank you very much for your time. The word afraid, what does that mean to you? What does that mean to me? That's something that in information integration theory we have to take into consideration. 
The next question, what do scholars already know about this theory? Is there a scholarly consensus regarding the theory? Before we really jump into that, I want to talk about the concept of weight. Have you ever heard somebody say, well, we're not going to put too much weight in that person's opinion? What this means is you don't really hold it to have any value. Weight, as our book defines it, is a function of credibility. Whether or not you find something credible, whether or not you find the research to be something that you believe, and whether or not if you are the person that we're talking about in regards to information integration theory, what do, what do you, in your perception, what carries weight? For me, anytime somebody reinforces that concept of a dog being dangerous, that had weight with me. If somebody's like, oh, I love dogs, well, that hadn't been my experience, so that's not the weight that it's going to carry. So that's something that scholars already know going into this research and they have to be aware of. The next thing um, that I want to talk about is ontology. Of course, our book defines ontology as the concept of human beings and in philosophy that we exist and that we have our interactions with one another. It's just the basis of our existence. But specifically, we talked about universals and particulars, and we talked about um, endurance and occurrence. Universals are broad. They're the things that we can't change. Particulars are the little things on a day-to-day -day basis, a car, a chair, that can change. Endurance, continue forever. Things that we don't have control over. Traffic, the weather, our families, those are endurance. They're going to continue, but we cannot change them. Whereas occurrence, like our day-to-day -day schedule, we do have control over. These are things that scholars offer in support of the integra information integration theory because they align with the concepts that if you can control today to day what's happening in your life, you can help retrain your brainwaves. And then multiple cues. Um, Delusia 2003 talked about the concept of cues, and you could also call that stimuli. So when I'm exposed to something, like the dog for example, if that dog is scary to me, that cues in my brain, that fear, and I'm going to react to that. Again, these are all things that scholars have been talking about for years, and there's a great deal of support in the academic world to continue those notions. The next question, are there any gaps in the knowledge of the theory? Are there any areas of significant debate? Well, in any re research, you're going to um, come across problems, you're going to come across issues, and this is no different. Laura Haas, 2007, released a study in which, as I mentioned earlier, she simply said, information integration theory simply has too much information. It's going to clutter the research, it's going to be hard to identify what is true and what is not true. And then a very interesting study by Lee, 2009, 14 patients with stomach cancer were brought in and put under anesthetics. Throughout the process of the anesthesia, they were asked questions to see if they responded in their subconscious the way that they would when they were conscious. Interestingly enough, they didn't. This is good news for our research because what we're trying to figure out is whether or not an old dog can learn new tricks. Well, if those uh, concepts are not embedded in the subconscious and when you're not alert, you're not aware of them, there seems to be a lot of evidence that we can retrain somebody to think differently. Perhaps I could have gone back to that four-year-old Anna and said, you know, you were trying to shove the stick in the dog's mouth and you didn't want it. All dogs are not mean, but this dog is going to react to protect itself. And maybe that would have kept me, in knowing that truth, from being fearful of dogs for the next 10 to 15 years. In conclusion, information integration theory can be used to help people transform negative responses into positive ones. My research um, leans that way because of the, the level of subconscious, the response to cues, the concepts of balance and weight, those things play into whether or not we take information in, what we do with that information, and then our belief system going from that point. I really enjoy doing this research. Um, it's a, a very interesting topic to me. And I thank you very much for your time. And I'm going to upload the PowerPoint as well. So thank you for watching.